A man ate undercooked pork. This is what doctors found inside his brain. Don't you hate it when you are at work and one of your colleagues calls in sick claiming to have food poisoning? Despite the fact that you knew trying to get that shift taken since last week, you wish them good health and get back to your job. You have no sympathy for your co-worker. Either they're lying about being sick, or they're stuck in their bathroom all day while you need to work twice as hard to make up for their absence. And anyway, it's just food poisoning. They'll be better by tomorrow, right? Today's topic will be covering some food-related illnesses. As with all things medical, we recommend speaking with your doctor if you have any concerns. We will also show images of certain illnesses. So be prepared to see some yucky material. Now with that out of the way, let's get into it. Take a look at this image of a nice healthy human brain and compare it to this one. Oh God, what made those holes? More like, what made those holes? A study done in the New England Journal of Medicine by Nishant Dev MD chronicling the story of an 18-year-old man who arrived at the hospital with tonic-clonic seizures. Tonic seizures are when your muscles contract or stiffen violently and clonic seizures are when one or more muscles twitch repeatedly. Tonic clonic seizures are as you can probably guess a combination of both. The man also complained of pain in his right groin for about a week prior. When he was examined by doctors, he appeared confused and he had major swelling over his right eye. Medical staff then performed an MRI on his head and found this. Another report from the first affiliated hospital of Xinyang University tells the tale of a 46-year-old construction worker nicknamed Zhu by the Chinese researchers to protect his identity, who arrived suffering seizures and headaches. He was taken to the hospital after his co-worker found him collapsed and having a seizure and told medical staff that each night for about a month he'd been experiencing seizures. Doctors quickly ordered up a CT scan where they found multiple intracranical clarification and lesions on the inside of his skull. Zhu, not wanting to spend any more money, declined further medical care and returned home. Symptoms didn't fade, so he returned to the hospital for an MRI, at which point they found more of those fun little speckles all over his brain. Those little white dots are cysts. Cysts are little bags of tissue filled with air, liquid or other substances. The doctor gave out an anti-inflammatory and anti-seizures medications for our first two cases. But sadly, our first victim died in the hospital two weeks later. Zhu, however, pulled through after removal of the cysts and pressure reduction from within his skull. Rachel Palma of Middletown, New York, was experiencing hallucinations, involuntary movements and found himself suddenly not understanding the concepts of time and space. She says that she was no longer able to process the fact that the key opens the door. The computer screen looked completely different. It was almost foreign. She went to and from the emergency room at least 10 minutes. But medical staff couldn't figure out what was wrong with her. Eventually, Palma's GP noticed a lesion on her left frontal lobe and directed her to a neurosurgeon by the name of Dr. Jonathan Rossoli. She arrived at his office for a biopsy of the lesion, fully expecting a diagnosis of brain cancer. She says, I was told that it was most likely a malignant tumor, which would require radiation and chemo, even after the surgery. Rasuli during the surgery noticed that the lesion looked like a koi leg. Same size, same look, same firmness, which disturbingly enough was clearly not a brain tumor. Rasuli says that brain tumor are very soft, very mushy, they're not very well defined, they're infiltrative, and it's difficult to get completely around them. So not small round like what was found in Palma's brain, if it wasn't a tumor, then what was it? And what does she have in common with Zhu, another victim? Palma, her first victim, had no recollection of consuming uncooked pork. But Zhu told reporters that he had eaten pork in a hot pot before he felt sick. He said that he only simmered the meat a little. The bottom of the pot with spicy broth was red, so couldn't see if the meat had been cooked thoroughly. Technically, all uncooked meat carries some danger. Dr. Lian Jacques, professor of food science at North Carolina State University, explains that anything harmful lives on the surface of the meat, not inside the muscle. So if you like your steak very rare, just searing the outside will likely kill anything harmful. But when meat is ground, any bacteria on the surface mixes throughout the product, so it must be cooked thoroughly. Chicken has a higher risk of malevolent microbiota than beef, 
because they're usually raised in extremely right tide conditions and are produced at massive scale. Chicken meat is also much moister than other meats, which allow microbes to permeate the entire structure, so they must be cooked thoroughly. Fish like pork has chance of being filled with parasites, so cooking it is the best way to keep yourself safe. However, you can kill those parasites by keeping fish at temperature minus 4 for a week. Regulations on how fish are intended to be eaten raw vary throughout the world. The United States of America Food and Drug Administration recommends that meats should be frozen before eating it raw. But there aren't specific federally enforced laws on the matter. Most restaurants will prioritize their freshest and fastest fish for raw consumption because giving their customers parasites is bad for business. The reason you want to cook your pork all the way through, even when it's not ground, is because it's just bacteria, what we're worried about. We're also trying to kill off those parasites which will burrow into the muscle. Why is pork more dangerous than beef? Well, it's simply evolution. There are more species of parasites endemic to pork than there are to beef. The symptoms of tapeworm infections are usually pretty mild or non-existent. Sometimes it will be followed with digestive problems including pain in the abdomen, loss of appetite, and weight loss. If you do insist on eating your food raw, just make sure you get it from reliable suppliers. Thanks for watching the video and be well.